Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Now to tell you the truth, I think what's in the book is pretty good. They talk about uh, three types of modulation, amplitude modulation, single sideband, and FM. Uh, FM or phase modulation, the two are so closely related that we kind of treat them uh, the same. Now I have some equipment behind me and I'm going to let you hear what each of those kinds of modulations actually sounds like. Now we started out in our last section with a radio wave. A radio wave is an oscillation at a radio frequency uh, in the, of the electromagnetic field. And I'm going to show you what a radio wave sounds like and then we'll modulate it in different ways. I'm going to throw in CW just for fun on this too because it's something that you will encounter. You don't have to worry about it, but it's a kind of at least fun to know what it is. Now we're not going to talk about digital modes. We talk about digital modes in a future lesson, so there's more to come. There are many, many different ways to create modulation on a radio signal. Now, one last question I'm going to answer. Why do we modulate the radio signal? The answer is simple. It's the modulation that's the information that we want to send to the other person. That's all there is to it. Let's take a look. What you see before you is some pretty simple equipment. This little unit right here is a small transmitter. It's going to transmit on the 40 meter band or the 7 megahertz band. This is a telegraph key and we're going to use this to turn this thing on and off. When we press it down, it's transmitting. When we let up, it's not. This right here is a what's called a dummy load. Uh, it's an ancient one by Heath called a cantenna. And what this is is just a great big resistor so that all of the radiation from here goes into here and it's dissipated as heat. Well, maybe a little bit, tiny bit will leak out and will be enough to make this receiver over here be able to hear it. So, first of all, let's find out what a radio carrier sounds like. I'm going to turn up the volume here. Okay, now I'm going to press this down so that we're sending and the answer is that a radio wave doesn't sound like anything in a radio receiver. Now you can tell if you look closely at the signal strength meter it goes up. It's receiving something but who knows what. So what we do is we put a special facility in the receiver, it happens to be called a beat frequency oscillator, that allows us to know when a radio wave is being transmitted. So I'm going to change the mode here to a mode that will uh, listen for that. And I'm going to transmit, and now what do I hear in the radio? I hear a tone. Okay, just a tone. So there's my radio wave. I can tune it, oops, can tune it up and down uh, a little bit if I uh, want. Okay, but there you are, a radio wave. Okay, the radio is receiving a radio wave. What good is that? What good does that do? Well, we need to modulate it in some way so that there's some information. Now, if we take the most basic case, a radio wave can be either on or off. On, off. Well, is there anything that we can do with that? Well, sure. That's where the Morse code comes in. Let's take the letter A. A short followed by a long. So that's one way that we can modulate a radio wave. I'll send my call sign in Morse code.
Yeah, just a bunch of beeps, huh? Well, we can go beyond this. And what we can do is put our voice on the air so that we can hear it. Now, there's lots of AM stations out there and lots of single sideband stations out there. So we'll just tune some in and you can see what, we're, what they're like. First of all, let's get up into an area where we're likely to hear um, some single sideband signals, which would be up in here. And we'll turn the mode to lower sideband and see if we can tune around a little bit. Okay, 7128, we are hearing a single sideband signal. Now, if we don't use that special feature where it injects a carrier, this is what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like much, does it? So we inject that carrier and we'll go to lower sideband and lo and behold we hear this. Now, single sideband signals take some work to tune in. So a single sideband signal needs to be tuned in. Now let's listen to what an AM signal is like. Now this is an AM uh, shortwave broadcast station. And that's what it would sound like using an AM receiver. Now as it turns out, you can receive AM by using that insert that carrier and we'll just change the mode here to upper sideband and then the lower sideband okay and receive the AM and you know what AM is like um, on the AM broadcast band full of uh, talk radio stations all the time it's exactly the same kind of thing and do you see the problem here Just hear all that interference that we're getting that's a problem with AM radio uh, at all is the the interference you're going to hear it so next I'm going to demonstrate FM and I'm going to do it with an entirely different kind of equipment and we'll be doing it on frequencies that you'll be using as a technician. All right, what we're looking at right now is uh, what would be called a, a two meter slash 440 or dual band mobile radio. It's called mobile because it's the kind that can fit in your car. It's got a microphone that you can use and so on. This is an FM only radio. Now, it is squelched and let me tell you why is because if you're listening on FM and there's no signal this is what the radio band sounds like not very interesting is it so what we do is we don't let uh, the signal come through unless it gets to a certain strength now let me give you an example I'm using this little uh, handheld uh, transceiver I have this is called O Shing it looks like Wuxun but it's O Shing a very inexpensive little radio that just might end up being your first radio but what I'm going to do is I'm going to transmit on this frequency now let me open that squelch again as soon as as soon as I transmit it captures the radio and there's no background noise except the background noise that's picked up in here. I'm using very low power doing this and I'm going to identify this is KE0OG testing and demonstrating and now let me do that with the squelch closed. Okay what we've got here is the same radio and when I transmit you hear it kinda of come in and go out like that like that and uh, I think you can hear my voice uh, kind of coming back through the radio right now ke 0 OG done testing now I want to show you what it sounds like to work on a repeater now a repeater which you'll learn about in future lessons is an FM device and you transmit on one frequency this frequency and listen on another and what you're hearing is the repeater identify itself in Morse code KE0OG testing. You hear the beep coming back telling you that the uh, uh, 
repeater is working just fine. So, lots of options, lots of different modulation. You use them for different things. Some are better for some things than others. And that's why we have such a variety. And ham radio operators aren't limited to just CW, AM, single sideband, and FM. They can do lots of other things too, but that's enough for now. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual, and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.